Hosea chapter 8. Set the trumpet to thy mouth. That's an alarm. That's a war. It hasn't been blown. It's a preparation. Trouble's coming. And that's what this chapter is going to be about. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord. I'm going to show you two verses here, something very interesting. Now we're talking about Israel North. Is the house of the Lord in Israel? It's not. It's in Jerusalem. Because they had trans transgressed my covenant and transgressed against my law. What is the house of the Lord in Israel? Are you ready for this one, Baptist? It's the people, the children of Israel, that God made a covenant with. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then Moses at Mount Sinai. Not the, the only house that's in Israel is the house of the calves. A steakhouse. And we'll see something else to back that up later in this verse. You see people go running in there. Oh, the house of the Lord, the house of the Lord. It's the people. In the early book of Acts, there was no church buildings. They were their house. Husband would be ordained and given by the apostles to teach people. The wife would clean the house. People would come into the house. They would have a Bible study. It would be a home church. I had one in Norwich, Connecticut. I knew one that knew a guy who had one in Groton, Connecticut. I favor more a home or house church, whatever you want to call it, than you got a church building. Because then the building becomes the God. And oh, the reward you're going to get if you cut the grass and clean the pews. And don't tell me, I've heard the pastor preach the message. Israel, there you go, shall cry unto me, My God, we know thee. At the attack of the eagle, at the attack of the, of the trumpet being blown, at the attack of warfare, it's too late. Every knee's going to bow before the Lord Jesus and proclaim he's the Lord. Some of them are going to be, it's too late, it's your damnation. Israel has cast off the thing that is good. What's the thing? God. The law. One. Verse one. The covenant. Verse one. Jesus Christ, when, when, when Gabriel told Mary, in the womb of Mary, that it. <laughs> That's Jesus. The enemy shall pursue him. That would be Assyria. For Judah, it would be uh, Babylon. I don't really know who took care of Gad and uh, Reuben and after I Manasseh. They have set up kings, Israel North, but not by me. Not one king in Israel did right, ever repented. They have, set, they have made princes, and I knew it not. We have voted in presidents of the United States of America that know not God. Not ordained by God. I didn't say all of them. I believe many of the presidents are set up with the permission of God for Satan to do what he needs to do. We have House of Representatives, we have a Senate that don't know God. And God doesn't know them. A 
Of their silver and their gold, they made them idols, plural. Well, that goes all the way back to Micah in the book of Judges. That goes back to the, to the children of Dan taking Michael's fatherly priests and images and idols and teraphim and Jeroboam's golden calves that they may be cut off. That, that has a double application here because cut off for having idolatry and then number two, the silver and gold being cut off the idols. You realize the silver and gold that may have been in those idols may be a coin in Europe today or who knows where. Thy calf, uh-oh, there's a move, of Samaria, and Jeroboam made two calves, one in Samaria, Dan, one in Bathsheba. Has, the, has cast thee off. The golden calf is the religion of Israel. My anger is kindled against them, God's anger and God's jealousy against idolatry, and then you get a church, the Catholic Church, and well, you know, they're aids of worship. No, it's a sin, it's abomination. That's why they don't want their people to read the Bible, because they read the Bible, they would know the truth. You do know that the Roman Catholic Ten Commandments is not the actual Ten Commandments. Number two. Number two has been removed. While number ten has been broken into two, so you still have ten, though you don't have ten. You have nine. And it is winky dinky that the commandment of the ten, the one that is missing, is about the idolatry. Gee, how convenient is that? And the same thing's got to be happening here in Israel because it's still the Ten Commandments. Look at the idolatry. We've got in the churches today, we got idolatry. We got people, the pastor, this evangelist, this church house, this pew, whatever it is. I know a church. When they started and they got that bill, we're using the original pews from. And then our rec hall, we're going to have the, 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 the air hockey and we're going to have couches. Friend, I've been in many churches. <laughs> My anger is kindled. Kindled. You know what kindled means is you're going to start a fire against them. How long will it be ere they attain to innocency? What's that? There's the golden idol. Whatever it is. If it would be a statue of Mary, be the cow, it would be the rosary, the, the, the Indian gods, and whatever it is. The Pope, the preacher, the church building, the sports team, the American idol, whatever it is. And you're sitting there and you're worshiping it. You turn your back on God. You say, I'm, there's no, I'm not doing nothing wrong. When you got somebody and I come up with the evidence, I come up with the facts, and he's never going to leave Easter alone this year, is he? I come up with the facts. I come up with the information. Easter is pagan. And you walk away from, well, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. Innocency that you're sinning against God. And you expect God to give you a return. Friend, we are in the same boat that, that Israel is in, and we are in the same boot, boat that Judah is in. For from Israel was it also the workmen made it, the idols, the cow. I mean, did, did you like what Aaron said when Moses Moses said, well, what is this? And I'm not quoting verbatim, but Aaron said, you know, I took their earrings. Okay. I threw them in the fire. Oh, okay. Out came this cow. 
Boing! Uh, the Holy Spirit said, Aaron, you fashioned it. You forgot that, didn't you? It popped out. I had today, I had French bread pizza for lunch. I go in. I turned the dial on, 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 the, on, the, on the oven thing there. When I opened up the door, boom! French bread pizza. I didn't do nothing. I, I threw the bread, I threw the dough, and, and you know the pepperoni and the sauce. And out came the French, and that did not work like that. But the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces like Aaron's calf. Moses got so angry. I mean, he broke that thing in pieces. He, he, it says he strewed it in the water and had the children of Israel drink it. I don't know if gold is part of your diet. I like iron and magnesium. But the children of Israel that afternoon with Moses got their daily gold from a cow. And went through their, their, their digestive system. For they have sown wind. How do you do that? They shall reap a whirlwind. What is these idols? What is these calves? It's nothing. What is the wind? It's really nothing. Go outside and look for the wind. Oh, but what you're going to get in return is not just wind. You're going to get a tornado. You're going to get a whirlwind. You see, to realize in the life of good or bad or evil or, or righteousness, whatever you sow on the ground, you're going to get more. Problem is, when you sow to evil and that which is bad, it has no stock. Nothing to hold the leaves, nothing to hold the fruit. The bud shall yield no meal. Well, that's kind of weird. How can you have a bud if you don't have a stalk? Everything of this idolatry goes against nature. If Adam and Eve never ate that fruit and they were alive today, and they would be alive today, they'd taken the tree of, the, uh, of life, there would be no idolatry. There would be no imagery. It's not natural. If so be a yield, the crop, if there would be a crop, strangers shall swallow it up. And you see throughout Judah, the plant, and the Babylonians, the Chaldeans came and ate. They built a house, the Babylonian Chaldeans came and occupied. They, they married a wife, the, the Babylonians, the Chaldeans came in and took her. They had children, the Babylonians and the Chaldeans came and took them. Strangers would be the Gentiles. Israel swallowed up now. <laughs> Shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel where is no pleasure? Where are they? They're in Assyria. How, well, how well are they doing with God? Judah went back under Ezra and Nehemiah, but not Israel. You won't hear about Israel north into the tribulation period. And they're not going to be getting together unit and, and, and unity until Jesus Christ returns. They don't even know who they are today. For they're going up to Assyria, there's the strangers, there's the Gentiles, a wild ass alone by himself. <laughs> Nobody can ride him, he's not tame, he, he's not been... Uh, bread for any use. And the only one that can tame them is God, Jesus, because when Jesus got on that, that ass, that ass had never been rotted, that ass has never been broken. 
Ephraim has hired lovers. So we're back to the whoredoms. Will you be my lover? I'll give you a six month. America has hired herself out to be lovers of, you know, the great evil China. But how much do we get of the Chinese goods? Food, cars. Oh, the great evils of Russia and how much export and import from Russia do we get? You know, if these nations really wanted to get against America, all they would have to do is get, it, get together and tell the United States, pay your debt. The United States can't even pay its debt to its own people. I read there, there in Europe, I forget, there was a nation going after another nation say, hey, you owe us for World War II. That was a long time ago. When they're actually taking this country, I forget what the country there, and they're going to take this country to court, and they want their World War II money. It's owed to them. Well, what if China said, hey, we want our money? Or we'll take our Walmarts back. We'll take our Dollar Trees back. Yo. Okay, we get in a conflict. Well, actually, we didn't. Russia gets in a conflict with the Ukraine. Okay? And our gas prices have doubled. What? How do you explain that? Besides the fact is you got greedy companies in America. It's the American way that we can just raise the prices. And you think God approves of that? After reading the book of Proverbs, how you're supposed to help, you're supposed to aid the poor. You're not supposed to raise so you get a capitalized capitalization. Well, you know, you can find that where Jesus talked about everybody. That yeah, you can make the Bible say anything. You, you can make the Bible so we can make, make Noah's Ark in America. Who thought of that one? And who's brilliant ideas? Oh, we're going to let everybody see what Noah's Ark was like. Okay. And then we're going to charge him. Can you imagine if anybody would have gone onto that ark, except for his, his family, seven, his wives, his three sons, and their three wives? Can you imagine if people, if somebody, which they did it, but can you imagine somebody walking up that gang, but no, wait a minute, wait a minute, it'll be 1250. 1250 for you and your wife, and 650 for the child. All right, let, let me give you a little brace plan or whatever. That ark isn't in Mitch and I know that God said you need it. Someone told me, I'm not sure, I, I don't pay it, but they actually have dinosaurs. Model dinosaurs. I mean, if there were all those dinosaurs on this planet, uh, you know how I look at it? It would be a lot of crap. They were big animals. I don't know how to you know, move on. Something like that. That's a, that's a wild ass trip. Yea, though they have hired among the nations, Ephraim went to nations, didn't go to his brethren. You know what the Christian will do today? He'll run to the bank. He'll run to... I don't understand what these places are. You know? You can, go, you can go get a payday loan. If you get paid on Friday, and this is what I think, and I'm wrong, forgive me. But you can go Tuesday to get money and pay them on Friday. I don't know. Whatever it is. But I know I know for sure, my, my, my dad told me, and, and a co-worker told me, you can go to the casino that was in Montville, Connecticut. There is a desk there. 
And you can walk up to the desk and say, I live at such and such street in such and such city and state and zip code. And they'll look it up. And they'll find out what the appraisal amount of that building. And you can sell your house there at the casino to go back and play money. But you don't run to God. And you know how many pastors told me, and it's sorry, that they have blown money out to people in the congregation. I'm not going to say Christians. They are, they are. They're not, they're not. They've lent money out to people and not one dime has been paid back for that loan. Why do names come to my head and they go flying out like a turkey? Mueller sat at a table with a bunch of orphans with no food. Told those orphans to bow your head. We're going to thank the Lord for this meal. There is no meal. They bow their head. They're praying and thanking God. And a knock on the door said, my bread truck broke down. And if I don't give this bread away, it's going to go bad. You see, America wants, the Baptists want that kind of revival. You're not going to get it. Now, we'll read on. Now will I gather them. They shall be, they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes. Because, now watch this. Ephraim has made many altars to sin. Altars shall be unto him a sin. Run back to verse 1. Set the trumpet in the mount, he shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord. That's not the temple, that's not the church building. That's the people. All right? Verse 11. Because Ephraim has made many altars. How many Baptist churches are out there? How many other churches are out there? Other denominations, no denominations, have an altar. Right? Shall be unto him a sin. So what's the invitation? You want to come up Christ? You want to bring your sins to Christ? Come up to our altar. Because after all, we got the greatest house of the Lord right here. There's no other greater house than right here. XYZ Baptist Church. We got the altar. So did Ephraim. It's the house of God. So did Ephraim, verse 1. God says it's all sin. You, can, you, know, you, know, like, you can't find the altar in the Bible. I just showed you the altar in the Bible. You want to take a ride, Daytona Beach, Florida? Daytona Beach, Florida. Not South Daytona. Not... Holly Hill, not the land, Daytona Beach. You want to drive every road in Daytona Beach, every road. Even if it's dead end, we got to turn around. You wonder, wonder how many church buildings we're going to find? And inside those church buildings, are there going to be altars? And how often all those buildings and all those altars did somebody get up in a podium or a pulpit and say, we got the greatest. <laughs> oh, man. And Daytona Beach, Florida is one city of how many cities throughout the world? You want me to take you to Norwich, Connecticut? Where we studied Baptist history, you want, you want to take all the roles of churches and all that around? And 
And there are pastors, there are people, there are, they, they, they think their church is the church, and they think their altar is the altar. Friend, I got saved at a coffee table. I got in trouble for moving the, the, the little stupid knickknack off the coffee table, so I could receive Jesus. I've witnessed the men in prison sitting in those little plastic chairs. I believe it was it Charles Wesley or, or his brother got saved, the Lord working on his heart on a ship. There have been people saved at a street corner. A man nailed to the cross next to Jesus got saved. He didn't go to no prayer altar. Hold it! What is it, Jesus? Take us all down because he's got to get down to the altar. <laughs> you know how, you know how, how the, the, the Romans would have laughed? And the, and the Pharisees? I believe the Apostle Paul knelt down right by his donkey on the road to Damascus and got saved. I know some people don't believe that. They, everybody's got their beliefs. I believe Peter got saved right by that campfire on the on the on the shore of the of the sea. And yes, people got saved in church. I witnessed to a woman in, 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 a, in a nursing home. Got saved right there. Then the pastor fought me. I don't know where she could got saved. Yeah, that's because you're mad because you didn't get the credit. But you did get the credit. God gives the increase, sir. There are people who got saved. Listen to Billy Graham. You want to hear the wall? There are people who got saved in the Catholic Church because they believe the virgin birth. They believe that Jesus Christ came. Jesus Christ is God, unlike the Jehovah Witnesses. He suffered and died and rose again outside of the tradition, outside of Good Friday, outside of Easter. Jesus Christ suffered and died for them. They got saved. With the Statue of Mary watching, maybe. I don't know. I've been in two churches. Their church is the house of God. Their altar is the... We're the greatest church. Friend, that's pride. Haven't we been talking about pride since Genesis? Find me a place where you're supposed to meet in a building. Paul got up at, at, at a place where they had, the, you know, the, the, the erection of the, the unknown God. Because Ephraim has made many altars to sin. You know what was going on in Judah, according to Jeremiah? Every street corner was an, was an altar. You know, you can practically say Daytona Beach, every corner is almost a church. I have written to you, him, the great things of my law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. But they were counted as a strange thing. Well, what did Israel do? He made his own laws. He made his own covenants. He made his own calves. He made his own celebrations. He made holidays. Not holy day. They sacrificed flesh for the sacrifices of my offerings. And eat it. The only ones that were to eat the sacrifices off the altar or burn offerings was to be the priest.
but the Lord accepted them not. There are people who will come and bring a tithe. There are people who will come and cut the grass. There are people who come and polish and clean and whatever they do for the name of their religion. They'll burn candles. They'll support their pastor. And God will turn to an angel. Don't write that down. I'm not accepting it. Or, okay, write that down. Mr. Smith put $25 in the collection plate. Okay, Mr. Smith put $30. Ooh. Then comes April. Erase all those offerings Mr. Smith did because he put it on his IRS. He used it as a tax deductible gift. That's his reward. Jesus said, Mrs. Allen, she's fasting. She write that down. Where's she going? What's she doing? Well, look at me, everybody. I'm fasting now. I'm going to fast for three days. I'm going to do it. Erase that. I I'm not accepting that. I've been in churches, believe it or not. Unacceptable by God. We're going to have the dollar dance. We're going to everybody who's going to put a dollar in. All right, now we're up to the fives. Do your dance for the five dollars. You get the twenty dollars. Everyone's gonna put the twenty. Everyone's gonna put a hundred in there. They're making a big show. I'm serious. They parade around and how much they're gonna put in that play. God's up in heaven. I'm glad the pastor's happy because I'm not. There are people, you want to see how godly you are? Listen to me. <laughs> God's up in heaven like, does anybody know what that person said? There's not one angel who can interpret that tongue. <laughs> I can understand the French. I can understand the Italians. I can understand the Polish. I can understand the English. I can understand the Russian. I don't understand that Pentecostalism. And they'll say, listen, you don't have it unless you speak in tongues. And God's like, I'm not accepting that. Does this sound familiar for what we are in Hosea in today's day and age? Now will he remember their iniquity. Instead of a blessing, instead of a sacrifice, God says... That's not covered by the blood. And that comes a danger to the church and to the Christian today when you're going to partake of the Lord's Supper that Paul warns us that you are in this nonsense. And the church wants a revival and they partake of the bread and the blood without judging themselves. And in, in, in the world of you want a revival like the old time preachers in Methodists. How close is the near, nearest bar where your church is? Or package store? Because when we had the old time revival and the men got up and preached on the streets and they got and preached in the pulpit, the places were packed. The Holy Spirit was on fire. The liquor industry suffered. 
Billy Sunday preached against the alcohol. He preached against the salon, the saloons. They hired killers to get him. I can't imagine Billy Sunday putting a sign outside where he's going to be. By the way, Billy Sunday didn't go to any church and didn't belong to any denomination. How's that? But can you imagine Billy Sunday having to, having to sign out there? All are welcome. Yeah, yeah. The alcohol. You think he would? We're giving God all our, our worldliness. We're bringing in worldliness. And God says, I'm not. I'm not accepting those sodomites. I'm not accepting that women preachers. But that's a sin. Yeah, you come to church on Sunday, and what you're going to do Sunday night? What you're going to do Monday morning? What did you do Saturday night? And visit their sin. Plural. Reaping and sowing. They shall return to Egypt. That's exactly what God didn't want them to do. You know what the, you know what the, the Baptist churches, they're going back to Egypt. They're going back to Rome. They're going back to Assyria. They're going back to Babylon. That's where Judah was, weeping for Tammuz and the, the Queen of Heaven. And they probably had colored eggs, too. How more stupid is colored eggs? Like, Easter's over. Want to get on Mother's Day? Let me tell you how the person who wanted Mother's Day now absolutely regretted what she did and what she started. Lift up your mother. You mean like the Catholics do with the Virgin Mary? You know, when Jesus was, what would Jesus do? Every time he dealt with it, he said, woman. Woman, my time's not yet. The only time I believe he ever called her mother, he's on the cross, he says, John, behold thy mother. And behold thy son, I think, something like that. That could be wrong. They're going back to Egypt because they're going back to their mummy. Oh, I could resist that. You know, when you trace, and I have, go to my website. You know how much of this stuff goes all the way back to Egypt? You know where those cows came from? They came from Egypt. Where did that Aaron get the idea? He got it from Egypt. You know what Egypt was? It was a place of rigor, service, of bondage, and slavery. That's what sin will do to you. For Israel has forgotten his maker, capital M. And build his temples. You ever know any Baptist churches are called temples? I do. Is it Quinky Dinky? Chapter 8. <laughs> Alright, let's get to Judah. Now Judah has multiplied fenced cities. <laughs> look, look, look how industrious we are. Look, we're going to build a wall across America and Mexico. <laughs> how many years later, the only place America is going to... We're going to build a wall. What other wall places has there been in America since the American Revolutionary War? But I will send a fire upon his cities. That's Judah. Also Israel. And it shall devour the palaces thereof. Oh, they're living in palaces. Did you read in the Gospels about the high priest? How he lived in a palace? Wow. They got rich. 
overly rich by the sins of the people. And there are pastors of churches out there. There are priests of churches out there. And whatever you call your leader, if you're a church, you're not out there. And they're living on the hog because you are a sinner. And the Catholic Church puts you under that burden by going in the closet, confessing all your sins, and then they hold you to it. That's how it goes. <laughs>